This is phenylacetylene. It's a goofy molecule that has similar properties to the gas acetylene, but is a liquid, so it's much more practical to handle in the lab. The thing is, I'm pretty shit at organic chemistry, so I wanted to make it to train myself. So I went on side madness forums and followed someone's procedure. <laughs> the first step is to acquire a chemical named styrene. It's a flammable liquid that can polymerize into the well-known polystyrene, aka styrofoam. Basically, the polystyrene is a bunch of little styrenes linked together. So we just need to unlink them, but it's not an easy task because those pesty links are pretty strong. The way we're gonna do it is that we're gonna take some polystyrene and pack it into a container which we will have to heat to 300 degrees Celsius. Then it should decompose into approximately 60% of styrene and 40% of bullshit as well. To fit the polystyrene in a container, we need to reduce its volume because it's 99% air at the moment. So what I did is that I added some acetone to the polystyrene to dissolve it and make it into this compact flammable paste. Then I put it everything into a steel vessel, which I heated using some wood in my mud furnace. This way I can easily achieve the 300 degrees needed without tearing any glassware. The styrene recalled is dark and impure though, so I will have to distill it again. For the second distillation, we can use glassware because it shouldn't tear up too much. I collected the fraction between 140 and 150 degrees Celsius, which should be mostly styrene. I did a quick overview of this process because I did it a long time ago, but let me know if you want a real video about it. Alright, so now onto the second step. The reagents we need are the styrene we made, some hydrochloric acid, some calcium hypochlorite, and optionally some dichloromethane. I start by measuring 20 ml of styrene in this graduated tube that I then pour in the round flask. Then I measure 10 ml of dichloromethane, which is not really a reagent in this reaction, and you might be able to do it without, but I'll explain later what's the point of adding it. Then I measure 12.8 grams of calcium hypochlorite on the scale, which I also added to the flask. It's not going to dissolve in the styrene dichloromethane mix, but that's normal. And finally, I measure 27 grams of 23% hydrochloric acid. Then I patted the flask on the hot plate and added the hydrochloric acid in the dropping funnel. I turned on the steering to mix everything well together and started to add the hydrochloric acid slowly. I also added a cooling bath filled with 0 degrees water to keep everything cold. While the reaction is happening, let me explain what is going on in the reaction. When the hydrochloric acid drops into the styrene mix, it reacts with the hypochlorite to form chlorine gas and calcium chloride. The chlorine gas is not directly evolved though, because it can dissolve a little bit in the mixture. And the reason we added dichloromethane is because it's just very good at dissolving chlorine, so we lose less chlorine to the air and hopefully we get a better yield. Ok, so now that we have a chlorine in solution, it then reacts with the styrene in a simple halo addition reaction where the styrene gets converted to 1,2-dichloroethylbenzene, which is the product we want. Sadly, there are also some side reactions, such as the direct addition of hydrochloric acid to the styrene, but it should not be favored because of the presence of hypochlorite, which reacts with the HCl faster. When the hydrochloric acid addition is finished, we are left with a cloudy yellow mixture. In theory we should see a water layer and an organic layer, but they don't separate very well, so I added some water to separate them better. I then pour the two layers in the separation funnel, and I also drop the turbo. Oh fuck. Yes, sir. I also added some dichloromethane to again have a better phase separation, and then shaked and vented the funnel a few times. I extracted the organic layer a few times and then put it in the hot plate.
I heated the solution to boil off the dichloromethane and be left with mostly our 1,2 dichloroethyl benzene. Alright, so now all of the dichloromethane has boiled off and now most of the water has also boiled off so we can finally stop heating, as you can see. Alright, and remove the beaker from the heat as well. Nice. And we should be left with mostly the... Um, the one two dichro whatever the fuck his name I don't I don't remember the name but yeah basically that's what we have for the third step I put this 500 milliliter round flask on the hot plate and added approximately 200 milliliters of ethylene glycol which I obtained from boiling down some car coolant sometimes you can also find car coolant that is more than 90 percent ethylene glycol but I didn't have that sadly our second reagent is 40 grams of solid sodium hydroxide which I measured on the scale. After adding the stubble and turning on the stirring, we can add our sodium hydroxide and start to heat. After some time, the solution somehow turned greyish, and I have no idea why, but at least the sodium hydroxide seems to have dissolved, and so we can add our 1,2 dichloroethyl benzene and close the apparatus with a condenser to distill the product. The phenylacetylene should distill after being produced at approximately 142 degrees Celsius, but I heated more to be sure to collect everything. The reaction also produces water, which will distill as well, so we get two phases again in the receiving jar. So once again we will do liquid-liquid extraction using dichloromethane, and then to get a pure product we will carry a simple distillation and collect the fraction near 143 degrees Celsius. Alright, so next video should be about the follow-up of my lead dioxide electrode because I finally managed to make a very good one using a slightly different way so I think it deserves its own video and then I will do a third last part on the perchlorate production itself I have successfully produced some perchlorate in solution but I didn't have the time to finish the electrolysis of the full batch so there's still some chlorate left to electrolyze so I was thinking between the second lead dioxide video and the perchlorate video I could maybe make another side video on the explosive allotrope of antimony so yeah, cool videos are in the bag, and see you next time for more electrolysis.